Lord, we yield ourselves to you right now. We yield ourselves to you. Come on, church. There's some major work happening right now. And I want to keep this atmosphere right here. Come on, you're worshiping. Don't, don't stop worshiping. Keep your worship on. God's ministering to you. Don't stop. Don't stop. In the middle of this atmosphere right here, keep playing, Dan. Don't stop. Brother Eddie, come here real quick. Brother Eddie Smith, him and his wife do restoration ministries. Motorcycle ministries. How do you know we're going to be a spirit-filled and a spirit-led church? We're spirit-filled right now. Come on, it's moving. But we're going to be spirit-led. The Holy Spirit said there's an exhortation that this brother needs to give. Hold steady just a minute because there's something else God wants to do. But you need to hear something that God's directing this man to say to us. Hey, some of you know me. I'm Eddie. <laughs> I'm a believer. I'm no longer a drug addict. I'm no longer an alcoholic. I'm no longer a criminal. I no longer tear up Grant County, Saline County, Jefferson County. I'm going to knock a dent in it for God. In my past, if I've come across your path and led you down the wrong way or just joined you in the wrong way, I'm sorry. But God led me to me to him about six years ago. I hated the assemblies of God. I lived beside an assembly of God slinging dope and sharing. And they would come and ask me to park in my yard and they wouldn't ask me to come into their house. And God has a funny way of, of pulling tricks on you. And one day I got invited to a, a free show with a free ticket and we went into an assembly of God in Mountain View, Arkansas. And I gave my life to the Lord, and I hit the ground running for ministry the next week. And so I quit my job about a month ago, and I just give my life to the Lord fully. He's going to take care of me. What I found in, in, in that day, I, I sat on the end of my bed and I cried because I knew I wasn't out of the drug world. I'm not part of it, but I'm still in it. Oh, I'm not going to be out of the criminal world. I'm still in it. I'm not part of it. God told me I was going to go where nobody else wanted to go. What I learned is I read that Bible, and I read that Bible, and I can't find where Jesus told everybody to go to church. I found where the, he told the church to go to everybody. So I'm just putting a challenge this morning to you. Go to everybody. What I found, we do prison ministry. We work with 1% motorcycle clubs. We do all kinds of crazy stuff. God's put us in bars and everywhere else that I never thought God would put somebody, but that's where the hurt people are. Right now, we're going and having church in people's living rooms that won't go to church because their church hurt in this county. And, and it hurts me. Heaven's just, heaven's a by, it's just a byproduct for Eddie and Lori Smith. Reaching the loss is the goal for Eddie and Lori Smith. The Lord's blessed us to go to all kinds of churches all over the state of Arkansas, all kinds of denominations. I always pray this right here. Lord, just take the denominational boundaries down in this community. Because the body of Christ is so divided with signs on the outside and set out by our road. It just seems like the body of Christ is just divided. The eyes over here at this church and the, and the other eyes over here, and they won't get together to see what's going on in the community. But I just love you. I, I love Grant County. I, it's hard to come back to a place you tore up. It's hard to come back. I'm scared to come back here, but I learned about three years ago, you better do what God asks you to do. He's going to put you through it. Me and Lori got to be Jonah for a minute, so we, we obeyed this time. But I love you guys, and, and, I, and I challenge you. Talk to the guy you wouldn't normally talk to and bring him to church. Talk to the guy that, that won't come to church and take church to his house, to his family. Feed him. We just base our, our love for the Lord off two things. 
Love God with everything you got and love your neighbor like you love yourself. If you got electricity in your house, make sure that your neighbor got some electricity too. Not your brother, your neighbor. God picks your neighbors you don't get to. I love you guys. Pastor Mark. I got a feeling there's somebody here who deals with their past. I got a feeling that there's somebody here who's hurting just like this man has hurt before. But yet God has changed him. God has changed him and God is turning him around. Let me tell you this. You can be free today. You can be free from your failures. You can be free from your past. The things that we are ashamed about, let me help you with this. The things that we are ashamed about from our past, the moment we become bold enough to say, this is who I was, but this is who I am now, can I tell you, your shameful past suddenly, suddenly becomes your testimony. It becomes pure gold in the eyes of God. It becomes a crown and a trophy that you can put out in the public because you're not ashamed of it anymore because you know where you came from. But I feel like there's somebody here that needs to be free. I don't know what your past is, but I'm telling you, I know what your future is. There is freedom. Brother Eddie, come down here. You and your wife, come down here a second. I want you to stand right here. I want you to face the congregation. If that's you, and you need some healing, you need some restoration, it's nobody's business what your past is. But you need freedom today. You need freedom. You need freedom. You need freedom. Because that thing holds no sway with you anymore. If you belong to Christ Jesus, that thing belongs behind you. And if you need Jesus, now's the time to find him. Come on, church, pray with me right now. Pray with me. If that's you today, I want you to step out and I want you to come stand before this precious couple. Thank you. Thank you. To somebody else, you want freedom. You want freedom. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Come on down. Nobody judges you today. I'm telling you, there's nobody going to judge you. There's nobody going to judge you. Nobody's going to judge you. How can I say something about you when I sin? My sin may be different, but I sin. Come on. Come on. Get out behind him and pray for him. Get out behind him and start praying for him. Come on. You need freedom. You need freedom from your failures. You need freedom, friend. Before you can get freedom from anybody else or anything else, you need freedom from yourself. You need that old self gone. You need that feeling gone. You want that hurt and pain gone. Come on. If you're here and that's you, step on out. Come on, we're going to believe with you. We're going to pray for freedom for you. We're going to pray for freedom from you. You want that stuff gone. You don't want that held over you anymore. You don't want that held over your head anymore. Come on. There is freedom. Come on. Jesus. 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 There is freedom. Freedom reigns in this Come on, get your freedom on right now. Get your freedom. Get your freedom.
God wants to do here. There's more God wants to do here. I want you to hear this word. Some of you that are sitting there, there's still something God wants to do in your life and nobody's going to make you. But the Lord is causing waves and waves of progressive ministry to happen here today. I want you to hear this because this may be your word. This may be the thing that you need to hear today. I am the girl in the classroom who sits in the back that no one notices. The one who dyes her hair black and wears dark makeup and clothes and long sleeves in hope to cover the scars. The one who has nobody to love her and tell her she is beautiful. The one who finds release in razor blades and contemplates suicide every night. The one who, the one no one talks to because she is different. I am the guy with anger problems. The one who lashes out and starts fights. The one who acts like a clown for attention. The one who goes home every day to a comatose mother strung out on drugs and an abusive drunken father. The one who tries to cover the bruises and when someone sees, laughs it off as his own clumsiness. The one that everyone sees, but no one does anything about. I am the girl at school who thinks everyone is, who everyone thinks is too fat. The one kids pick on in school because she's bigger than everyone else. The one who hungers for love because everyone around her says she will never find it. The one who cries herself to sleep every night because of the words her classmates say to her. I am the popular football boy that everyone adores, the one that picks on others but is dying inside, the one who has a family that does not care, the one who is filled with anger and rage because he has no love, the one who drinks and smokes every weekend to numb the pain and feel free. I am the beggar on the street corner, the one who has to scavenge for food, the one who thinks everyone, the one everyone thinks will spend money on drugs or alcohol when all they want is a bit to eat, the one who prays every night for a miracle that they might live another day. I am the drug addict, the one that finds satisfaction in a joint or a needle. The one who can't function unless they're high. The one who desperately needs someone because they are lost and alone. The one who wants to escape, but they can't because they're too far gone. 
I am every one of these people. I am all of them, and yet you say, Jesus, come show yourself to me. I am right in front of you. I am all these people who are lost and alone, and I have given you a mission to reach out to the least of these. Where are you? You call yourselves my children. But where are you? Because I am right in front of you every day. I am the man who has lost hope. The woman who cannot go on anymore. The people who struggle every day to survive. I am each of these. All you have to do is reach out. Because I am the least of these. Come on, bow your heads with me right now. Somebody's here. She's reading your mail. The Holy Spirit gave her a word. And you're here today. You identify with that hurt. I'm telling you, there is a God who's ready to take that hurt away. There is a God here who's ready to transform your life. I'm telling you, if you'll let it, it'll happen. Come on, church, pray with me right now. If that's you, if that's you, step out right now. You can leave here different. If that's you, Brother Mike, I've already been down there for something. It's okay. Come down again. I'm telling you, our healing comes in stages. If that's you, come down right now. I'm telling you, if if you're ignoring this call, if you're fighting the urge, don't fight no more. Thank you. Is there somebody else? Don't fight that urge. You can be changed. You can be new. Things can change in your life. That emptiness, that hollowness doesn't have to be there anymore. If that's you, come on. Come on down. I don't care if you're a deacon here. I don't care if you're on staff here. I don't care if your grandmama helped found this church. That's you. Come on down. You're hurting inside. You're hollow inside. I'm telling you, God wants to fill that void. God wants to help you. Pastor Mike, I love Jesus, but I'm just not feeling him. Come down here. I'm telling you, don't wait. Don't wait. How many times do I hear somebody say to me, Pastor Mike, I wish, I wish I had listened to you. I wish I had heeded the altar call. I wish I would have done it, but I didn't, and I, and I should have. Don't leave here saying I should have. Leave here today being able to say I did. Thank you, God, I did. Come on, step out right now. Come on, come on. You need that fulfillment. You need that fulfillment. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, where are my prayer people at? This is not your day off. Come on and pray. You know how to pray over people. Come on. Come pray, come pray, come pray, come pray, come pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Move, Lord. Move. Now, Father God, it's exactly what we're doing right now. We are giving ourselves away. Come on, those of you in your seats, come on, join me right now. And Lord God, we are giving ourselves away. It is no longer about what I want. It's no longer about my rights. It's no longer about my pain. It's no longer about the things that I've had to deal with. It's not about me or my anymore. It's about you, Lord. It's about you, Lord. You have called us to two things in this life, to know you and to make you known, to love you and then to love those around us. Father God, I declare right now a newness, Lord God. I declare right now a newness, Lord God. It is not about us. It is not about me. It's not about what I want. It's about you right now, Lord God. It's about you. Let the craving for self, let the craving for self be gone right now in Jesus' name. Across this room, Lord God. Let the craving for self and what self wants be gone. Gone out of our lives, gone out of our marriages, gone out of our circumstances. To quit being mad and bitter and angry. Because about what about me? And what about mine? And why can't I? Father God, we declare those things gone right now in Jesus' name. It is not about us, but about Christ who now lives within me. Whatever's a past is a past. Whatever we didn't like is gone. What we have now is today. And where you lead us, Lord. Come on. You're lost. You may have known God at one time, but you have walked away from that relationship. You may have come here today and you, you don't know the Lord as your Savior. You may have gone to church, but you don't know Him as your Savior. I'm telling you right now, now is the day of salvation. God is calling us. God is calling us. Dylan, I want you on this side of the altar right now. Matt, come get on this side of the altar. Come on, that's you. Come on, church, don't grow weary. Come on. This is what church is. Wave after wave of his presence. Somebody needs to come back to the Lord. Somebody needs to come back to the Lord. These men are ready to pray with you. We have ladies ready to pray with you. Come on. You heard the word of the Holy Spirit. Respond to it right now. Right now. Don't wait. Have you gotten away from God? and you need to make things right, come right now. Come right now. 
Don't wait. I'm telling you, don't wait. Don't leave here today because you have no excuse. To leave here today saying, I'll get right later, is the same thing as telling God, no, I'm not going to get right. Don't do it. Are you here today and you need to make some things right with God? Come on, step out right now. Come on, step out right now. Come on, step out right now. Turn to your neighbor and ask him, are you ready to get right? I'll go with you. I'll go with you. Come on, ask your neighbor. Ask your neighbor if they need some things to get right with God. You heard the word. That means somebody is here today. You've let inches from God turn into feet from God, turn into yards from God, turn into miles from God. You're away from God. You know it. It's drumming in your heart right now. Please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Step out right now. We're ready to pray with you. We're ready to lead you home. If you've noticed anything right now, we're a church that cares. We're a church right now that cares. We don't want anybody to miss God. Nobody. Come on, are you here? Come on, church. Pray with me. Pray with me. Lord, right now, if there's anybody that needs you a Savior, come on. Don't let them. Don't let them stay there in their pride. Don't let them stay there in their shame. But let them be man enough or woman enough to admit, I need a fresh walk with Jesus Christ. Bring them, Lord. Bring them, Lord. Jesus. Come on, are you here? Are you here? Are you here? I don't know what you're waiting on, but I'm telling you. Now is your day for, for a new day. Now is your day for a new day. Come on. Now is your day. Turn that, turn that feet. Turn that feet and miles into readiness right now. Come on, somebody's already moved. Is there somebody else? Is there somebody else right now? Is there somebody else? Come on, pray with them right now. Thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Lives are coming back to God right now. Lives are coming back to God. Hallelujah. Is there somebody else? Don't wait. Don't wait. Are you here? Are you here? Are you here? Come on. Come back to God. Come back to God. Come back to God. Come back to God. Hallelujah. Won't you come just as you are? Hear the Spirit come. Come just as you are.
won't you come just as you are hear the spirit come come just as you talking about men who know how to take the devil on. I need some men right now. Come on, step out. I need some men to help me pray over this brother. I need some men. Come on, step out. This is the brother right here. Tell you what. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. you to hear something very quickly. I know some of you need to go and you want to go. I'm telling you, church, let us be that kind of church that we don't care what's going to happen. What would happen if the Lord kept moving till two o'clock? Can I tell you? Let's be that kind of church that just lingers. Sometimes we have obligations and I understand that. And Those that have obligations, feel free. But I would pray, church, that we be that kind of people. 
I'm telling you, God is looking for people that doesn't look at their clock. They look at him. They don't look at, 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 at obligations that they have. They look at the phenomenon that God is in the house. Because I'm telling you, there's things God wants to do. And he's looking for a church that's willing to let him do it. If we say no, he'll move on by. But I'm telling you, the more we say yes, the more he shows up. And you never know from service to service what God wants to do. But I want you to hear this. In Matthew chapter 14, John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, was beheaded. And it says that when Jesus heard it, he didn't know it. This was not something the Spirit revealed to him. He heard that John the Baptist was put to death. It said he departed, departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. Church, let me tell you something. When grief comes, we don't run to anything else but Jesus Christ. When your heart is broken, where do you turn? When you receive news that's not good, where do you turn? If it's to a bottle, if it's to a pill, if it's to the phone, if it's to, to luxuries, if it's to food, if it's to spending, if it's to some other thing than Jesus Christ, I'll tell you that thing is a God and a sin to you. When Jesus heard and his heart was broken because this was his cousin, this is the one who went ahead of him. When he heard about it, what was the first thing Jesus did? He departed away from everybody else. He got away from everybody else and he got alone in the Father's presence. That's what you and I need to do. Are you hearing me? Do you know why we suffer? Do you know why we have to have these altar calls like this and we deal with stuff about stepping feet, uh, 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 yards, miles away from God when we have to pray for deliverances to be delivered from addictions and things like that. It's because of this. When we get into trouble or we hear bad things, we don't go to God. We go somewhere else. Or we try to pull up our own boots by our own bootstraps. Hear what Jesus did. He departed and he got to himself with the Lord. And then it says, but when the multitudes heard, they followed Jesus on foot. And when Jesus went out, from that place he was, the moment he came out of his grieving state, Matt, the moment, Brother Kelly, that, that he was done grieving and hurting, he came out, James, he came out, and when he did, he saw other people that were hurting too. Guess what he did? The very healing that Jesus got, the very comfort that Jesus received, he went out and he began sharing that same comfort. Can I tell you, when you get freshly filled with God, the best time for God to squeeze you out into somebody else's life and let them get what you got is at that moment. When you leave here is the very best moment for God to squeeze you out on somebody's life. Jesus knew that when the hard times come, where do I go? I go to my Father. The Lord himself knew when I'm in need, I go to my Father. And then when I come out, this life is not my own. I am called to know God and to make him known. As Brother Eddie said, I am called to love God and to love others. That when I come out and I'm refreshed, I'm now called to go back out and minister to people. I'm telling you, church, this is a people God is trying to raise up. Not the ones who sit on a chair all the time. Not ones who receive from God and get all fat in Jesus, but they won't share any of it with anybody else. Can I tell you, that's the one where they will say, but Lord, did we not do these things in your name? And the Lord will say, depart from me. I never knew you. Why? Because you didn't know others. Because you didn't give this to others. You kept it to yourself. It stagnated inside of you. I'm telling you, he, Jesus said, he who wants to keep his life must lose it. The more we give away, the more we receive. What we have experienced here today is that what God wants to do in your life every day. It's a refreshing. It's a saving grace. It's a refurbishment of your life. It's a cold drink of water on a hot day. God wants to refresh you every day. 
And the question is, church, is the only time is the only time you get something from God when you come to church. I pray every time you come to church, this is happening. I pray every time we come to church, God is moving. But hear this word from the word of the Lord. When Jesus knew he needed it, he got to the Father. But then when he departed from the Father, he went to the people. And you will find, you will find that at the very end of this chapter, when he ministered to all the people and they all left, it said Jesus went back, where? Into the presence of the Father. And he stayed there. And when Jesus got out of that prayer time, he walked out, walked across the water. And that's when he, him and Peter had their time walking on the water. And it said after that time of prayer, they went across the sea and they went to a place called the Gadarenes. If you remember, that's where the, the demons left the man and went into the pigs and the pigs went into the water and they all died. Jesus healed this man. And when the people saw this man healed and delivered, they said, hey, we need you to leave. We need you to leave. Don't stay here. Please go away. They were afraid of him. But here comes Jesus back to that same region. Guess what the people were doing now? They were flooding to him. I'm telling you, those that reject God, when we get out of the Father's presence into the world, and we're reaching out to people. Those that once rejected Christ will now say, where is he? I need him. And I'm telling you, if you don't do it, who will? I can't be at the hospital all the time. I can't be at Sonic. As much as I'd like to, I can't. I can't be where you live. I can't be where you go to school. I can't be in, in Little Rock or Hot Springs where some of you were brought in from. I can't be there, but you can. You are God to this world. You are Jesus with skin on. You're Jesus to this world. Let him use you. Make the difference. Quit looking at your own life. Quit looking at your own pain. Get the healing that you need. And then go out and live. Because I'm telling you, we get one shot at this. And once it's done, it's done. And all we have left is to stand before the Lord and hear him say, I've weighed your life and I've either found you worthy or I've found you wanting. Mm. I don't know about you, friend, but I feel like I've been in the presence of the Lord today. I ain't kidding. Thursday, I rolled up in here and said, all right, God, what you got? I have no sermon for today. None. Because God simply said, and I shared this with several people this morning, I don't have a sermon today, so God's going to have to do something. How do you know that was by design? That was by design. God had this day ordained for this moment, for this time. I'm telling you, when you come to church expecting with a made-up mind, God's going to move. Guess what's going to happen tonight at 5 o'clock? What are you going to do? Where are you going to be? I'm telling you, church, if you can say Sunday morning is enough, wow. I eat every day. Don't say amen too loud like you see that I eat every day. I eat every day. I Several times, it, thank you. Thank you. Come to God every day. I'm begging you, church. Come here every time the doors are open. I'm telling you, there's something more. There's something more. We have a sister coming tonight going to Haiti, a missionary. Oh, we got another missionary coming. I'm telling you, these are the same people going overseas, and they're seeing the blind eyes open and the, and the, and the lame walking. Come, because you never know what God may do tonight. And it could be the very thing that we need. Mm. We got all kinds of good stuff. But the thing I love the most about this church is the beautiful people that are here. Have you know you're around some good people right now. Stand with me across this place. Turn to somebody and just give them a great big hug. Shake their hand. Tell them you're glad you got to see them. Love one another. God bless you.
Go ahead and turn on the house lights if you could. If you see somebody you don't know, introduce yourself. Thank y'all for coming to church. We're going to have some more church at 5 o'clock. We're going to have a Bible study on Tuesday, the book of Revelations. Uh, Wednesday night's family night. We got something for everybody on Wednesday night. Y'all need to come out and have a good time with us. God bless you. We love you. Shake hands and hug necks because you're friendly. Be sure and pay attention to all the good stuff in the bulletin. We'll see y'all tonight, 5 o'clock. God bless you.